buckle up. Welcome to Musicians and Beyond, where we bring you the backstage info on the life, lyrics, and long journeys of the music industry. John Sarabian and Mark Lawhorn are your guests today. Mark, how you doing? Fantastic, John. How are you? It was nice of you to show up today. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks for getting the studio ready for me. It's uh, as expected. You know, you kind of get the Howard Stern thing going. You walk in, everything's all set up, and, you know, your guests are here patiently waiting for you. I just want to say, um, you're right. I do have it like that. Yeah. It's not bad being Mark Lawhorn. It is not. So, Mark, last, uh, last week we had Chloe Caroline from Los Angeles, California. Talented young lady, a lot going on. I recommend that our uh, listeners go and check her out. Yes, please do. Go to the website, go to the Instagram, go to the Facebook page. You'll find us there, and soon enough, it'll be back on YouTube. Absolutely. And today, we are honored. So today, in studio, we have a married couple. We have Jean and Natalia Stico. They're going to tell us about their journey. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Good oh. to have you guys in studio with us today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it, and it was very convenient for you because you're from the town that the studio's in. That's correct. So the this s- is like the place we probably are for a third time already, right? The city of Malden. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Just, welcome, to, welcome to Malden, John. Welcome to the hood. <laughs> Neighbors. <All right. laughs> I'm the only outcast, as usual. <laughs> so, Natalia, you've been doing uh, a lot of music, obviously. You were doing it since you were a little kid. Pretty much since I was born, but I don't remember that. So I start having my memories when I was like around four or five. But, you know, you never know. Maybe, you know, maybe when I was screaming when I was born, I was actually singing, but nobody knew about that. No one knew about it, but that's what what was going on. Well, you really harnessed it well. You're making a good name for yourself in the area. Your main genre is in the opera. Yeah, I stick probably to the most complicated genre, but however, what I figured out, if you're able to sing opera, later you're able to adapt your voice to anything. Mm-hmm. what you're requested to sing. And why did you pick opera? <laughs> it's a good question. Um, originally, I was, of course, a fan of any type of music which I enjoyed, so including pop, including rap, including Russian pop, which actually influenced my taste. But when I was around like 10 or 11 years old, I don't remember precisely, my mom took me to the opera because back then we had our opera theater being repaired and then they after this long repair where they reopened and that was a must see because it's a beautiful theater it's like european and i just fell in love with that because it was something new it was uh, very challenging for a kid and uh, some people say like oh my god you know there are just people screaming on stage i don't know why but being a kid i exactly i was like emerged so much that i understood what was the message of all that yeah that's pretty interesting as a young kid to yeah. like opera i mean you don't hear that that often Exactly, yeah. (laughs) I mean, like, my kid doesn't like opera, so. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I'm actually from Latvia, so, you know, it's probably, I would say, challenging history to explain, but I will try. So I was born in 1986 when Latvia was still part of the USSR. So theoretically, nowadays, I don't have any motherland. I was born in one country, and I immigrated from absolutely another country. And uh, I would like to say that I probably have all this both culture mix. So having like this European influence and also a little bit of USSR influence, I just try to emerge in both cultures and get the most for my future. Good Excellent. for you. Excellent. And you've been here about five years. Oh, this is my fifth year. Yeah. Fifth year. And then you met this handsome gentleman. <laughs> well, we, no. actually, we actually met in Latvia. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So my, uh, telling you a little bit before the show, my background is not at all in music and not at all in opera. So I was a, um, I was a government contractor and my specialty was geopolitical and transnational security risk management that focused primarily on energy sectors and critical infrastructure. I can see how that goes with opera. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. If well orchestrated. In the midst of doing that, I met Nat actually in her day job that she was working at the time. So aside from being a a talented musician, she is an absolutely brilliant IT engineer. Wow. And you, you need to make money somehow nowadays. Before <laughs> right. you before you kick off your career in music, you have to figure out how you actually manage to pay for all the lessons that for all the good things you have to do for your music yeah. career. She's easy enough on the eyes. <laughs> and uh, me, considering myself to be somewhat suave and sophisticated, thought I would impress her by inviting her out to karaoke. <laughs> Not knowing she was that actually work also a professional <laughs> opera singer. And you thought you were going to impress her at the microphone. I, I thought, so. you know, I have a very good karaoke game. The thing, 
the, the, the funnest thing he actually did because when you put like when he introduced me to Bobby Darren like I knew who it was but I wasn't like that emerging music I still sometimes can mismatch whether it's my husband singing or Bobby Darren wow, so, wow. Yeah. you're that good oh I'm that yeah. good wow I'm that's that impressive good. she's sitting right here in what, I'm, what? That, I'm that good <laughs> <laughs> right? All right. whatever yeah. game you had that night it worked <laughs> <laughs> and what song did you sing at karaoke do you remember uh, he, I don't remember what I actually sang but I remember what he sang he sang Mac the Knife <laughs> <laughs> no. You did. Uh oh. No, yeah. but b- b- Pearl, Pearl Black. Pearl Jam. Pearl, Pearl Jam, Jam Black. No, but then you sang Mac the then Knife. Then I sang Mac the Knife. Okay, mm-hmm. ah, so I had to tell like in the right sequence, right? Right, right. right. Well, I want, I want the listeners to know there's a, <laughs> I'm a little bit rock. I'm a little bit. I love it. I'm a little bit crooner. A well rounded. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So you basically manage Natalia. Well, I mean, I, I do whatever's whatever's needed. You know, I mean, she's, you know, as an artist, you got to make a buck. You got to mm-hmm. have a career somewhere. Like an artist, she's extraordinarily humble and there is a business to it. And so it's been a little, you know, it's a journey because coming as an outsider and seeing her struggles, the struggles of her friends, you know, these extraordinarily beautifully talented people, kind individuals, you know, just the greatest people in the world, you know, a lot of them are artists and they're horrible business people and they undervalue themselves and, and all the rest of it. So, you know, I kind of took it upon myself to say, look, let's manage this like a business. If we're going to go to the U S like, so we, we met, we married here, we went back to Europe, we decided to come back to the U S and I said, if you're going to give music a, a serious shot, then we've got to manage it like a business and we've got to think of it from that approach. And, and it's, it's not easy and you've got to work like an entrepreneur and, and all the rest of it. And so essentially, you know, I focus on setting that baseline of the, the business. You know, the decisions are hers to make. I, I'll, I'll lay out the options. I'll, you know, I'll do whatever needs to be done from driving to carrying the equipment to setting it up to whatever it is. I would even add that he actually negotiates the amount of money I'm being paid. So this right. is something I'm horrible at. <laughs> and this is probably also the mentality of ex-USSR people because their business was actually legal back in the days and still we are still learning how to make it work. Right. So we probably have this mentality. We just there's that's the work. You have to get it done. And that's it. But like, you know, regarding all the negotiations and like figuring it out, you know, how much your service actually is worth. This is like challenging. And that's why I have Gene. You know, and they wind up sacrificing what could actually be built into a pipeline of work and a sustainable career. You know, COVID was a great equalizer in a sense or or eye opener, you know, as whatever the case might be. Sure in the importance of artists managing their careers as a small business mm-hmm. and getting out of the starving artist mentality because COVID proved you could literally become a starving artist overnight. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys have a great working relationship. You have one side of it and you have the other side of it and together it's, it's a well-oiled machine. We tried to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a little hesitation there. No, absolutely. You know, I mean, and, and there are, there's, you know, there's moments of stress and, and conflict and, and visions and, and burnout. And, you know, and, and again, I'm a, I'm an American business person. I'm take a risk, roll the dice, you know, we'll figure it out tomorrow. She comes from the, you know, she said that Soviet, Soviet mentality, mentality yeah. and that influence. Well, like of, it was, you had to be equal, you know, you shouldn't literally raise your head and be different from anybody else. So this sense? was like the equalizer. And like, I know nowadays it's not only me, it's the whole generation still trying to get rid of this mentality that you have to sell, you have to literally this is your product this is what you do you know put it out and what i also see there are people who are way much worse but they get further because they just believe in what they do and this is what like yeah this is what ussr did kind of sort of it killed individuality if i if i like express in the right way and like it made you believe yeah you're just one of many Absolutely. So this is like what I'm still learning and this is what I'm still mastering in to understand you're unique. This is your art. This is how much your art is worth and just go ahead and spread it and don't be shy about that. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a very, very good lesson to learn, not just for those coming in, into this country from an environment mm-hmm. like you were in. Um, what we try and do is bring something to music and to musicians and, and people in the industry that give them some food for thought, so to speak. So for you, 
this is a great lesson for people who are out there struggling. They have an opportunity. Learn from what you've done. Learn from what you've done. And, and I guess in the music industry, there's a lot of people that end up as couples. You know, you work together so long, you, George and Tammy, why not? You know, that story, right? <laughs> right. It, it happens throughout music. People end up gravitating towards each other because they're so close. And how do you make that work? So this is your words today. Hopefully will help some other musician along the way figure out where they're going in their path. I know? just think, you know, like I spend money. And I spend money out of my pocket, you know, instead of spending money, maybe I can earn money. Mm -hmm. This is this is my question. So I'm literally spending money on somebody else's ambitions. So like auditions or like running around the country is just somebody else has a vision and you're just, you know, with you covering the hotel and like the flight. This is like you're literally making sure somebody else's dreams comes true. But and this is what struck me, you know, why can't we do something similar? Like <laughs> I didn't do that to bring her here and have her quit. Absolutely. Good for you. And good for you. Thanks. Sometimes you got to take a chance. True. Believe in yourself. That's the biggest part of it. Right? You know, the, the time, that's a big investment. Money is a big investment. If you work at it hot long enough, the payoff's going to come. And the, and that's it. You know, and when we sat back and I said, you know, look, we got to you got to stop trying to satisfy you know, uh, the uh, trying to guess or satisfy the visions mm -hmm. of, of directors and, and managers and agents and, you know, trying to crack. There, there's no cro uh, there's no code to crack right. at the end of the day when I sat back and I and I applied a lot of that to understanding the industry and what it was all about. And at the end of the day, I said, you know what you got to do is find your audience. Right. Find a thousand people who will spend one hundred dollars a year yeah. on a ticket, your music, whatever. Find that first thousand and then find another 500 and another thousand and, and whatnot. I said, instead of trying to satisfy the different whims of everybody that you have to put yourself out in front of, find your audience, grow that audience, grow those people who are going to, you know, not just spend the money on you, but they're supporting you and they believe in you Absolutely. and they're getting to know you and, and, and they tell somebody else and they tell someone else. And it's really making that connection. And once you have them and that connection's there, you're right. It spreads like a virus and hopefully that spreads far and wide. So just keep on working. That's all. That's yeah, why that's I it. say. That's it. And how many times do you play out? How often are you out and out and about? It actually depends. So for example, uh, January. So the past month for me was like the training month. So I was out of the country. I have my coach in Italy who we will try to break, bring to the U.S. Uh, because he, let's say, he's like the guru of this old Italian school of singing, which is the basis to, like, I would say, any singing genre. So this is something what helps you sing until literally you die and, like, your voice is, like, fresh and, like, you're not getting tired. So his name is Paolo Di Napoli. So just in case, you know, so I can... <laughs> I can <laughs> Always I good can, to I drop can give, that name. I can give him a kudos, right? Like for all Absolutely. the good things he does. Uh, yeah, so I was for two weeks, I was out. So, I mean, I, I, used, I used my PTO like at work, like eight days just to make sure, you know, my technique is like getting improved and let, like, you know, I'm on the right path. But in reality, we don't have like, I would say 100% pipeline for every single month. So it depends. It fluctuates all the time so for example december yes yeah, so i had like four or five yeah four or five performances per december but it's christmas time so make sure you know like you take into consideration that it might be one per month it must it might be zero but i think the most i had was like nine or ten yeah this is like the most so yeah even like if you uh work uh as a op like international singer like traveling right like the most i think like it's kind of challenging to say, but I think like more than six, seven performances per month is very challenging, especially if you sing dramatic roles, because you just need time for your body to get back like on track. It's same as like marathon, right? So you can't run marathon and this every single day. So you just need to give your body time to relax and restore the energy. That's right. Because I'm sure doing a show takes yeah. everything out of you. Pretty much. Yeah. You know, between your voice and your, you know, physical mm -hmm. being and, yeah. you know, even mentally. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> well, it's an emo you know, it's an emotional art. You, you've got to tap into that, and there's certain certain areas that resonate more than others, you know. And and that's the the beauty of of opera, and you know. And I've been a fan, you know, since I was a kid. You know, don't get me wrong; like I said, I don't come out of the world, but you know, I understand it, and, and that's always been my appreciation. So there are those times, you know, when when she's doing particular pieces or in a particular environment the emotion of that music resonates a lot more and like you said it sort of you know, weighs on you mentally yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's you know uh, john thinking you know our past guests and some of the things we've done we pride ourselves in trying to introduce people to and and, and grow that network mm -hmm. when a guest of ours might be able to uh 
relate or work with another guest, we try and put them together. And I'm thinking James Norkowitz, who was a pianist that was on our show a while back. We know James. We know James. Well, there you go. (laughs) (laughs) So there's certain things you can just pick up on, right? Yeah. Yeah. So James is a great guy. He's a talented, talented person. And uh, I was just thinking, I I introduced James to a friend of ours who's trying to put together a show here Mm -hmm. um, in Boston about raising money for the Ukrainian relief efforts. And um, we introduced James, and hopefully that's going to take off, and that will broaden uh, James's scope there. Uh, but I was thinking about the same thing. You know, you, there's some synergy there that is evident. So uh, so back in 2020, uh, I released a single, and actually with the help of my husband, because he found the song. So that is called Requiem for a Soldier. It's from the TV series Band of Brothers. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, you probably know. It's like about World War II, which <laughs> is probably a very close topic to everybody who comes from ex-USSR. Um, and back then, for me, it was just a reminder to all of us that uh, there are sacrifices everybody has to make from time to time. And uh, for me personally, so both of my grand-grandfathers, they were killed during World War II, and my grand-grandmothers, they raised their kids by themselves. And in general, you take into consideration the fact that, like, my life now, so if my ancestors they didn't die, they didn't lose their life, I might not even exist, right? And Ukraine was this breaking point, right? Because literally back in World War II, so those countries, like, yeah, it was, USSR was one country, so, like, they were fighting, like, on one side, like, together actually with Americans, right? <laughs> like, what's, like, what's the, what's the worst about all that? Like, and I just wanted to do something, like, to support people of Ukraine, right? Because still, you know, after a long consideration, I mean, it wasn't, like, long consideration, but I still think, you know, it's illegal to go and occupy another country, right? Because Ukraine, like, got independence in 91, mm-hmm. and, uh, Due to the song, we like with the help of the song and with the help of like what was I going to tap Ukraine, right? It ta- right, ta- tap. it's called Taps International. Taps International, yes. Yeah. So they, uh, this organization, it helps um, military families all over the world, not only in the, in the U.S. Uh, financially, I believe, and both also um, morally to overcome uh, times when so so that, like if they lose a close one right right uh, right so yeah so ta- yeah the mission of taps is to support the families that are left behind of soldiers that get killed in combat and so they do it certainly for you know americans uh but they also support the the families mm-hmm. of afghani soldiers that sure. served alongside americans yeah. and they have a branch taps ukraine that supports uh the ukrainian families who you know began losing people uh in donbass in you know 2014 mm-hmm. And, you know, they picked up and expanded that mission to current crisis. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing that for the military families. I mean, that's really nice. Yeah. So like the, um, I probably didn't tell like what was the thing about that. So like all the streaming money for the song, it was directly transferred to tap Ukraine. And then awesome. they, beautiful. that was the thing. Beautiful. And it seems like it really touches a, a, a nerve with you. I mean, I can see you getting a little <laughs> emotional <laughs> talking about it. I, I get what? emotion. It's like yeah. a very, I would say, emotional question to everybody who is from Axiosa mm-hmm. because there, I don't even want to raise this topic, right? Because there are like families who fell apart because of that. Because right. older generation, they have their own point of view. And even if you prove like, there is, this is the proof, this is how it is. They will still have their own point of view. And I have seen families fall apart because of that. Yeah. It's just all this controversy, which is going on right now well it's an emotional song yeah. we would love to hear it if you would uh, <laughs> sure. do that for us sure <laughs> we'll never leave to see what you gave to me one shining dream of hope and love life and liberty with a host of brave unknown soldiers for your company we can live together here in our memory that was the first <laughs> verse <laughs> <laughs> wow beautiful I'm a huge fan of opera now, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very touching. And uh, only should warmed up, you know. That's yeah, it. no, I mean, <laughs> I know. I, I put you, I put you on the spot, and uh, I appreciate you your rising to the uh, to the occasion. We had done a, uh, we actually did a radio show. So over the summer, we were touring, 
and we were down in Tampa, Florida uh, with the Fringe Festival. And so we went with a few other uh, acts to a local radio station and did a show. And so they had wanted everybody to knock out a little bit of, you know, give every, give a little taste of the show. So, you know, there was a comedian. She did you know, a couple minutes of that. And uh, another guy that had a sort of one-man uh, play yeah and he did that and then nat knack, uh, knocked out a, a, a little um, like just like blast the full yeah yeah you, you know, know four or five hours, but but the comedian afterwards posted she's like the best part of this was nat just casually <laughs> knocking out you know four or five <laughs> operas in different languages you know pretty impressive that's very impressive and so you speak a lot of different languages so so i'm fluent in three uh english russian latvian Italian, I'm a conversational and, you know, I take my lessons, so it's four. I used to speak French. It was number five. I learned it for seven years, but unfortunately, I just don't have practice. And it, I understand, but I can't speak it anymore because Italian kicked it out. There are similar <laughs> languages, and when you don't yeah. use one, like another. I got to tell you, with your background growing up, your background growing or, or working in the industry, what is dinner conversation like between you two? <laughs> You want to know what dinner conversation is like? I hear all sorts of bullshit about <laughs> about <laughs> about stuff on Facebook and, and Russian women's Russian women's groups and and you know things like that. Yeah, the real problems of America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. It's um or like how face fitness gurus are a fraud. Like this is <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, right? She follows like some Facebook, and I'm like, don't you get they're just trying to get you aggravated? But they so say you click they, they are good marketing people. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. why I follow. Right? Them. No, that's a lot of fun. and hookers. You enjoy hookers? <laughs> yes, I do <laughs> hooker stories. <laughs> hooker, hooker stories. Hooker. They are hookers. like yeah, they, they have their Instagram now. This looks so fascinating. It's like how different my life is from what they are experiencing. Right. This is yeah. That's funny. Yeah, so we talk a lot about hookers over dinner, too. Okay. Uh, Mark, let's go over. <laughs> Potluck dinners? Yeah. Uh, too funny. That's too funny. funny. What do you have up and coming? On Friday, we have a concert here, actually, in Malden. And I will give my husband the chance to pitch about that. Okay. <laughs> Right, so we're we're standing up an opera company here in Malden, so it's called Mystic Side Opera Company, and then we're having a performance. Um, the performance arm of that will be known as Malden City Opera. Uh, and so Friday, February 9th, starting at 6 p.m., uh, we're going to be over at the uh, 339 Pleasant Street. It's the historic Wilbur Fisk Haven House. Um, we actually have our eye on it as a permanent location for the opera company. Uh, so we're hosting a preview night slash fundraiser and uh, have invited some guests as well as made it available uh, to the public. It'll be a small intimate gathering. Um, so it would be Natalia, a brilliant soprano from uh, Virginia, of uh, Virginia, yeah, from Virginia, uh, Jaden O'Dowd Cox. And then from Tewksbury, Mass, uh, again, absolutely brilliant tenor, uh, named Brian Landry. So the three of them were just going to do a uh, recital of some of uh, the some of the big hits, all the hits from the 60s to 90s. Mm -hmm. That's the 1760s to 1890s. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to, uh, and, and just, you know, give a little taste of what we want to do here in the city, you know, with the opera company uh, and, and show off this tremendous talent and, uh, and, and garter support because we have a bigger vision as well for the uh, future arts and culture center mm -hmm. and performing arts space there. The old courthouse. The old courthouse, yeah. you know, and there's, there's, beautiful places right here in in the city so um I, I sort of have this this slogan i'm working with forget the met you don't need to go to new york city just smells like piss and pot everywhere you go anyway <laughs> now right forget the met we've got world-class talent right here in malden yeah. you can get on a train from boston or cambridge and you can come here to malden there's great restaurants there's oh. great cafes everything is here and so we're, you know, really pushing that forward. You know, it, it probably goes back to my military days. I am, <laughs> I am fiercely loyal. I love it. Um, and so when I'm, I'm here, you know, I, and, I, and I grew up in Somerville. I went to school at Malden Catholic, you know, so I had that connection. My sister's lived here for over, for over 30 years. Um, and we've just, we love the arts community here. We, we, we love the city and, and what they do. Um, and, you know, what the vision is for here. And we think the idea, particularly with opera, you know, it's Malden's slogan, strong past, proud future, yeah. you know. I, I mean, that's what 
that's what opera is 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 all about you know and and so we want to we want to bring it here we want to claim our stake and say you know malden is a, a city of arts and culture and music and and we're gonna you know lay claim and and try and spearhead this effort to say you know it's a place worth coming and visiting and and spending your money and being entertained and yeah. because it it really is fantastic that's awesome uh, you know I'm a, I'm a very proud Maldonian. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, Ron and Caroline uh, Wyden. They have Me Too Orchestra. Nope. Uh, no, they no, live no, here no. in Malden. So they have a an orchestra-based. Uh, Ron was a, uh, a Ron Burlstein, conductor for very high-profile orchestra groups. And he came out and acknowledged that he had bipolar and was experiencing mental health issues. And from that, he was dismissed from his platform. Um, he was kind of shunned. Uh, he and his wife went out and started the um, Me Too Orchestra for any musician suffering from mental health issues. Mm -hmm. They have you come in and pay you part of the orchestra, and through that, they, they have formed an incredible group. Something I think you two would, would yeah, really, amazing. really be cool about. And, and, and that's what the thing about the city, I mean, the, there is talent hidden Huge. in every corner. Yeah. And um, no, and that's good. If you notice, Nat glanced over to me because she knows with my military experience and whatever, I'm mental as hell. So, you know, I, <laughs> I'm so right there I, with you. Know, right. I, I am all on board yeah, with like that. In Malden, we met Santon. I don't know, like, you're, are you aware? So, like, the blind from birth. Oh, yeah, but yes. pianist, blind it's and like autistic amazing. He's on like, the well, spectrum. It's, yeah. it's just like wow. And he yeah. and he's a, such a brilliant musician. Honestly. You know, I mean, again, fantastic human being, brilliant musician. Um, and right, you know, and right here, in right Malden. here in Malden. So mm -hmm. it, 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 everybody's I'm gonna here. Get you guys we just got to get them the all together yeah. because yeah. I, I know you've talked about how you know uh, our opera can bring relief and 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 calming to a person and i know it's a big thing for you to use it that way mm -hmm. and to help people you know um with with issues and and this might be a, another great opportunity for synergy yeah. um mm -hmm. they've performed over Definitely. at the senior citizen center for you know a couple of times and it's it's I'll, I'll send you their information and i'll make sure you guys get introduced to them because i think there's something really really great there especially with what you just mentioned what your core belief is in in what the city has you you're going to be amazed. Yeah, that'd be great. That table. would be wonderful. Yeah. You know, and, and, and as you said, the idea of, you know, the healing. And, and as I mentioned, we toured over the summer, the summer. We did a small, you know, 45 minute production. I advertised it to nobody in the opera community. Didn't want anybody here. This was about engaging people who had never had the experience of, of seeing opera or, or, you know, being as close. We did some small intimate theaters and, and all the rest of it. And, and, it was just about this idea of unplugging, right? I don't need you to listen to opera and blast it in your car and, you know, rock out to it. That's, you know, that's not what it's about. But it's the idea, it's an outlet to unplug, st step back, yeah. recalibrate your emotions a little bit, you know? I mean, I think that's, that's part of the problem in, in society right now, yeah. you know? We're constantly having our emotions played with, with what we see. Right. You watch the news. Everything's a narrative, a narr you know, and that's a specific word, you know, and a narrative is created to cause an emotional reaction, mm -hmm. you know. And so you you get one narrative and you get mad and then you, you see a puppy and you get happy and then there's <laughs> a baby and then something else makes you mad. You know, and we're bombarded with this all day. And that's why I tell people just if you if you open your heart to the music step back and allow yourself to recalibrate a little bit and the purpose of opera right pop music is the voice of a generation you know opera singers are the voices of composers who are trying to get these these particular emotions out of the the piece that they they want and if you can give yourself over to that a little bit even if you don't understand the language you can connect with the sound of joy fear anger love, desire, you can connect with that on an emotional level. Mm -hmm. You don't need to understand what's being said. And if we can do that, then when we hear a slogan, you know, a soundbite, we can step back and we can say, okay, I might not agree in principle. I don't have to react to it, but I understand what they're saying. You know, yeah. what I hear beyond the words, I hear fear, I hear anger, I hear this and that. And, and if we can kind of understand that, and stop reacting. Agreed. You know, so true. Then maybe everyone has 
a better discussion. I love that. Well, I, I'm so impressed with what you guys have planned for this Malden community, and, and, and I love the fact, as I say, proud Maldonian. I love what you guys are saying because I, I've been saying it's such a rich community. And, That's true. And, and have to have people like you two to bring it out and, and to put the spotlight on it. Mm-hmm. Um, anything we can do as you move forward in that, I would be thrilled to be any way I can help out. Thanks. And I know John appreciate as that. well. So, Thank you. Um, well, and like I said, you know, and, and I think there's there's a lot of people that, that, that want to do it and, and life gets in the way. And, you know, I'm blessed when we met and got involved and, and all that. I was, uh, I, I, I was retiring anyway. So I had nothing to do. <laughs> I mean, I mean, really. And that's why I say this is this is my retirement thing instead of, you know, rebuilding, you know, Mustangs or, or you know, <laughs> I wish I could say instead of running around with young chicks, but that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, but, you know, that's what, you know, that that's what I'm that's what I'm, I'm blowing my allowance on, you know, is is opera and, you know, promoting not just life. And yeah, I get it. I'm biased, but all these incredibly talented people who deserve they deserve a format to be heard yeah. and to be seen. And I tell them all the times, don't worry about being discovered. Just put something out to be discovered. Just and, keep on know, going. That's what I'm right. saying. Put it, you know. Give it up to the universe, but you know, keep going. Great words and, of wisdom all it, around. And yeah. put it out there. I mean, I even see with my coach, right? So I know him for like 14 years, but you know, I started like with him then I didn't work with him for like 12 years because I was doing something else, right? But I even see like how people, they come and go, but those who literally stick with his rules and with his method, they just keep on flourishing and they keep on just getting better and better with every day. And this is what is tricky about opera, right? You can't put end goals on that. You have to enjoy the process and you have to just keep on going. So I just changed my whole mindset because when I started putting goals, oh, I will be there, I will be singing this role. No, it doesn't work this way, unfortunately. Same as like the gym. You just go <laughs> like on a certain time, you know, on a certain basis, you have like one set of weights, then you just go heavier. And with opera, it's pretty much the same. And this is what makes it tricky. And this is what makes some people quit and very many people quit because they're not okay to accept the fact that nobody gives you guarantee and nobody gives you the exact moment when you will be ready. And this is what makes That's it tricky. True. Well, the quitters definitely aren't going to make it. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. You know, so if you stick right, with right. it in, in, you know, Right. Follow your dreams. Exactly. You, uh, that's why I say it's always a 50 50 shot. You're either going to get it or you're not. But if you're not doing it, then it's then 100% it's no. Sure Absolutely. No, yeah. You know, right. that's simple, simple math. Yeah. Yeah. So, Natalia, every musician has a hero that they wanted to be when they, you mm-hmm. know, when they grow up, a musical hero. Who do you look up to as a musician? Oh, that's a very complicated question because I have a great variety of musicians who, um, who empower me. But probably I will try to distinguish one, and it's definitely Maria Callas. And um, my singing coach and other singing coaches, they all say never look at her because she's out of the league. So she's not an example of the right path of an opera singer. But still, when you watch her recordings and when you watch especially videos, you understand the meaning why opera was born as a genre. Because she brings everything, every single this bit and piece right of that it's emotion it's like my husband mentions love death murder jealousy and she just reflects it like as nobody else does yes she might have some vocal imperfections only because she did she went all in but for me i think she inspired a great bunch of singers who came after her and still nobody can even be close to what she managed to accomplish and and so i think there's a tendency or there's a there's a a, um, a conflict of sorts in the industry between wanting to just be artistic um but also understanding that it's still entertainment. And I say this all the time. I said, you know, I'll ask the two of you, how much, what, what's your household budgets for art? Ours right. is pretty, pretty significant. <laughs> pretty <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, maybe, you, maybe, maybe you got me that. Beer in art. Beer in art. Beer right. in art. But I'm saying, you know, the general person doesn't consider, oh, I'm going to spend money on doing art this month. Right. 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 They, it's entertainment, mm-hmm. right? You, you sort of have a, 
probably an unlimited budget to a you know or if you're going to stretch anything you're going to stretch your entertainment budget absolutely yeah. i'm like that's that's the dollar that you're competing with as a as any artist mm -hmm. i don't care if you're a photographer or a painter or whatever you've got to convince people to go to your show as opposed to going to the movie, going to the, you know, the arcade. They still have arcades, is that? Go to the soda There's shop, yeah. go down to the soda <laughs> shop, whatever it is, you know, whatever it is the kids are doing nowadays. But, you know, that's what I'm saying. So so you've got to get over yourself, opera, as an industry, mm -hmm. and say, you know, you've got to show people the entertainment value. All this other stuff, all the stuff I talked about, the emotions, and, and you know, that's things we understand as artists and musicians and um like how I made myself a musician and artist all of a sudden. But, you know, that's the stuff we understand um, that you, you get out of it. But in the most superficial way, people are going to be drawn to it because, oh, that looks like it's a good time. And, you know, it's it's interesting. I've, I've never thought about it in this term, but you know, in the terms you just mentioned, you know, there's a mold and they all seem to want to try and fit that mold. And what's lacking there is the genuine personalities of the people. And we're not getting that. And I think if opera and, and the industry went that way, more people would be reflecting on the artists themselves and who they are Correct. and and buy into that because they're who they are. And and that's the yes. funny thing yeah. about it. I say it all the time, you know, there's a discussion, is opera dying? No, opera isn't dying. It's slowly killing and strangling itself. Yeah. Isn't and you funny? see people, and, and I laugh about it all the time because, again, I look at some of these singers who are trying to be every man, right? They're trying to, oh, I'm just like the average person and da-da-da-da-da. And you can tell you're not, you're trying to give an impression, yeah. you know, just, so just be yourself if you're, you yeah. know, an, an arrogant, which I could say it, you know, then, then you just, can say be, anything on <laughs> then just, you know, then just be it but because it, otherwise you just look like an annoying person. You embrace cunt. him for who he is. Right. Okay. You're the arrogant asshole. All right. We get that. Right. And, 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 and that might be part of it. You know, he fits a different bill than this one. And that now you have genuine personalities being true to true. each other. Yeah. But you know, when you're trying to be all things to all people, yeah. um, that's where the disconnect comes yeah. and, and when sort of an outsider looks at it and they, they don't feel that genuineness. And I think, you know, again, correct me if I'm wrong because I'm impartial. I think that's part of, you know, Natalia's appeal. And, and I say to her all the time, you know, I watch the audience, you know, when, when she's performing and I watch how they respond and react to you. And, you know, she is just genuinely loves what she is doing and it comes out and I think, Again, true for any kind of musician, you know, when you're not but trying you have to, to do it, to be when you're yeah. just being yourself right. and just having the passion, you know, it comes through. And I, I think, think so. she and, and a lot of these other singers, you know, I've talked about are just extraordinary at it. Yeah. So it's interesting. I'm kind of a rock and roll guy. Mark's <laughs> a little bit country. And I saw you on some post somewhere. And that's where I reached out. I was blown away. I'm like, this is a genre that I've never really touched upon. And I mean, I, it kind of, you kind of drew me into it. It was pretty cool. I was By like, the way, myself, I listen to House and Trance, so opera for me is work and something very serious. I don't <laughs> listen to it for entertainment. It's this is a fun something. fact. Yeah. I'm a Broadway musical guy. Right. <laughs> I, have a, I have a flair for the dramatic myself. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You get a lot of good stuff in the works, and, you know, you got a good man behind you here with some great advice. I mean, you, you definitely... Seemed like you know what you're talking about. Yeah. Extract, that, extract that sound bite and give it to me. And, and, I, I want to make it my ring. He's tone. more than the pretty face, as we always say. <laughs> and you, without a doubt, have the talent. And, Thank and you. The, you know, the stage presence, the looks, the, the whole thing that goes along with it. I mean, I think. But among us, you know, talent is, in reality, it's 10%, 90% is hard work. And this is what nobody tells you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, keep up that 90% hard <laughs> work because it's, it's going and, you know. Keep all the positive energy going. And so John mentioned something, you know, that how he found you was uh, on a post somewhere. And where can we find you? That's a good point. <laughs> you like that segue, John? Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank I you. almost <laughs> forgot about that. Mark, so, that's why I have you. Big money. Big I'm money. not just a pretty face. No, you are. <laughs> <laughs> so you can find uh, me uh, on Instagram and Facebook. So Natalia. Dot stico, uh, so it's spelled like N-A-T-A-L-J-A dot S-T-I-C-C-O. Just if you even Google search, you will get like all the web page, you will get Instagram, you'll get Facebook. Also, the music can be found on Apple, Spotify, and Amazon Music, if I believe. Correct. Yes, and I did it right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll get in a second plug. And uh, if you want to find her and more of the artists that we work with at Mystic Side Opera, you can go to 
discovertheopera.com, or if you're a rebel, you can do fthemet.com. I love it. Forget the Met. <laughs> fthemet.com. So, not- <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you guys get some fantastic plans in the works. We can't wait to see where this takes us and takes you guys. I mean, this is, it's really exciting, Mark. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to, to hear and to watch what happens and watch it flourish here in Malden. I'm dying to see it draw in people to our community. As you say, we've got great restaurants. We've got great community here. Yeah. Great people. The community's been super supportive and, and you know, uh, we're just very grateful, I think. For, yeah, I think for we, one of the things that makes Malden special is how those businesses do give back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we have some very big and strong charities here, but the business community gets in there and supports them. But <laughs> that's what I tell all the time, right? And even especially in the operatic world, just stay together because when people are together, right, like there will not be that many good singers who can't find work. But if you combine efforts, right, you can kill it and you can nail it. This is what people don't get. It's not about competition anymore. It's about collaboration. And this is what my coach also says. And he literally gets out of the people from like who he work with, who he works with, like once they start being jealous or once they start making intrigues, because it's all about collaboration. So opera, like it's the same same as like a successful business it has c-suite it has like managers it has like people who just do work and opera is the same way and like whenever the, the, the faster you understand this the more successful you are and also like be accountable for yourself don't watch anybody else unless you are specifically asked until, unless it's your so it's like you it's your path because you're unique and make sure like you do your best at the highest possible level that's all Absolutely. You know, I'll be looking forward to having one of those Pavarotti pale ales over there at Idle Hands. Absolutely. When it's out. Absolutely. Well, you guys should come Friday if you're around. You know, be I'll be in Fort Lauderdale. I, oh, nice. I haven't, oh, okay. I haven't even let John know that yet, Nat, even though we have a show Friday night. Nat does oh. perform in Fort Lauderdale on occasion. Hmm. Yes. Can I say one more? Can I make one more controversial statement? Please. Of course. We're all about <laughs> controversy here. All right. So, you know, a lot of times, sometimes people, oh, I love opera. I hear Andrea Bocelli all the time, the uh, tenor from Italy. Just to clarify, Andrea Bocelli is to opera what Olive Garden is to Italian cuisine. Okay. Okay. Love it. That summarizes it all. All right. I love that. That is awesome. Thank you for coming in, sharing your talents, and thank you for what you do for the community and, you know, giving back and donating and, and fundraising and everything. I mean, that stuff is huge. And, you know, we really recommend that all our listeners go and check you out, download some of your music on every major platform. Every major platform. They can find out where you're going to be playing and, you know, see probably see some videos on there if you Google it. And, you know, we, we really appreciate the both of you guys coming in. So, again, we have Gene and Natalia Sticko uh, in the studio with us, and we want to thank them for coming in. And we want to thank you also for giving shout-out to the Malden community, the Malden restaurants, the Idle Hands especially, and Paul Solano over at Pearl Street Restaurant. Yes. You know, yes. one of the great no, guys in Malden. Correct. The history taker of Malden. It's all up here in his head. Absolutely. Um, and, and, as a matter of fact, Paul's generously helping us out Friday night with yes. some uh, appetizers, yes. and then we're going to go over there great afterwards. Great guy. And I great think, people. I think by the time we get there, karaoke should be up. So oh, I, wish I, I wish I was uh, not going to be away. You might have to change that ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so pleasure meeting you both. So thank and you. thank you for thank coming you. in. And thank you for being our friends. Anytime. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. He steals my line every time. That was my line. You know what he says to me? He says, you ought to use that. Every time we close the show, you should say it. You know what he does? He says himself. <laughs> He says it right before I get to. Isn't Mark, that the, wasn't, that, wasn't that the theme from Golden Girls? Mark. Thank you for being our friend. Thanks. Mark, I'm still recording. <laughs>